Hello and welcome to the first episode of Cable and Credible Radio. I am your host, Cable Guy, with your co-host, Justin Credible. What's up, Justin? What's going on, Cable Guy? So, with the way we do this show now, the format is a bit different. We're now Justin is co-hosting, if the listeners are curious, where he is here to give his two cents, any anecdotal evidence he might have on stuff, and uh, contribute with his own questions to when we have guests. So... We're just going to get right into it because this is a podcast about wrestling, life, and so much more. So we're about to get right into it. So, Justin, this whole time we've been interviewing, I've been quite remiss about not bringing up the great Nicole Bass because she did quite a bit of time around you, didn't she? Uh, She really did, yeah. She was um, was there for a good while. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know about her. She was uh, was very, very sweet, very beloved. uh, a little bit goofy, well, you know, not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but a really nice girl, and uh, you know, she uh, she was a lot of fun actually. Sometimes she was a pain in the ass, but most times uh, she was fun to be around, and uh, she just wanted to do good. She just didn't happen to be very good and very green at the time, but um, you know, she was a nice girl. Right, right. Now, rumor has it that she could outlift a lot of the boys. Is that true? Um, I believe she probably could. I know she was uh, extremely other than her physique, not just that, but uh, very much so. A uh, you know, just a great, great, like you know, bodybuilder and strong as an ox. Uh, what right. you saw is what you got. You know, I don't know how much she exactly lifted, but uh, <coughs> boy, she was just a phenomenal attraction. You know, right. Every time. Right, I, I liked her her spot she did with Sable back in the day. That was always a uh, well put together. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Now, did you have any encounters with Sable back in the day, or, or did you not really? Uh, oh, uh, I, I did, I did. Uh, you know, she was a she was a nice girl. You know, she was a down to earth girl. She always treated me with respect, mm-hmm. and um, you know, uh, nothing really here or there about her. I didn't spend a lot of time with her but uh you know she seems like a nice girl treated everybody fair and what what about her her husband at the time the marvelous one uh you know he was cool right right he was cool yeah he was very cool you know not what he is today right uh, more low-key but uh he was definitely another one another nice guy right yeah him, him and i have more than one thing in common because uh he used to like box in the Golden Gloves, and he was from Buffalo, That's and, all, right. he, and he was from Buffalo and all that. And and it's like surprisingly, like a lot of the pro, a lot. And I'm not saying this running them down, but all the pros I knew that I I know around here, only like one or two of them really like knew about his boxing career. But that's because they were a wrestling fan too. And it's sort of a shame he never went pro because there, you know, there was always potential with him. Yeah, yeah, he certainly had all, all you know, all the athleticism and ability for it. Right. But uh, you know, they say that uh, boxing is. They say if you think wrestling should be, they say boxing is worse. So oh. I can't imagine. Oh my God, the the stories I could tell you just from Buffalo. I can't imagine we'll have to get into that someday. Oh yeah, but and 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 the stories I could tell you, it's just at the amateur level where there is like no actual like money involved. It is just egos and yeah. Sometimes guys like you know parents they'll they'll want to fight each other after their kids fight. It's insane. <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Or. uh or most notably at the Golden Gloves, where I watched uh, my, one of my former coaches and this other guy. He's a bit, he's like known as being the con artist in boxing here in Buffalo. And there's like a 20 year age difference, the con artist guy being like younger than him. And I kid you not, I watched a 70 year old man punk him right off in front of everyone at the Golden Gloves. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, and, and I can bring. That's, that's, the, that's the stuff that would go viral today. Oh. Yeah, and see, it's one of those things that happened so quick at the time, is I didn't think to tape it, but uh, yeah, it's it definitely caused a lot of amusement in the boxing circle here in Buffalo at the time. You know, I didn't see that person again for a while, but 
Yeah, we could definitely get into those stories someday, but that's another. Yeah, that, 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 absolutely. So now trolling around on YouTube, I noticed a, a match where you worked with Vader when you were uh, doing a show for the clowns. Uh, is it true? Is Vader a really snug worker, stiff worker, or was he very protective of you? With me, he was uh, protective. I never had a problem with him with Leon. He never hurt me. Right, right. Yeah, no, he was always uh, super cool. I mean, you could be a jerk. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, but no, he was uh, he was fine with me. Okay. He was a bully. He was sort of a bully, though. Uh, I must say. Yeah, but I heard stories of of uh, Shawn Michaels putting him in check. Oh. Well, yeah, Sean put him in check because uh, Sean was the man, and uh, they, uh, anybody knows if they crossed Sean, they crossed Vince. And uh, it wasn't a stature thing, physical stature thing. It was a political stature thing. Right. And, uh, you know, Leon knew his place, and uh, you never messed with Shawn Michaels in those days. Right, right. Now, going over the notes from from the previous interview, when you talk about the Naked Sandman incident, one thing that sort of laminates in my mind is I'm surprised nobody called the cops on you guys down there in Florida because, you know, they don't mess around down south with stuff like that, especially when there's Yankees involved. Uh, I, 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 I I don't know, man. Um, nothing really came of it. I mean, we were banned from the town, and, you know, it was just more of a, you know, once it hit, it hit, and it was just like... You know, New Jack was suspended for uh, for a little bit, but uh, you know, why would they sus- uh, why they sus- why they suspend New Jack? That's what like that's what like any parent in the crowd would have done for punching him. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> there was no rhyme or reason for that. The stuff that happened in ECW, <laughs> right? Now, was there heat between uh, New Jack and Sandman afterwards, or no? Mm, I don't remember. Right, right. I really don't remember. Uh, yeah, all I remember is that after a while it was forgotten, and you know it was like normal. So it was that's how easy was. Right, it was totally normal. You know. Right, right. So okay. So another question I got on social media is: people are very curious if you ever had any encounters or ever worked with Lex Luger. I did. Um, that was my first ever. Uh, match for the WWF uh, when he was a narcissist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and he was, uh, you know, kind of uh, arrogant. Uh-huh. Uh, really didn't talk much to me before the match. I was very nervous. Right. And, uh, you know, he was very easy, um, you know, but I was, you know, I was scared to death. And uh, he just, uh, you know, a couple minutes just did his thing and, uh, Mm-hmm. You know, he beat me clean uh, really fast, but uh, just kind of, you know, very uh, sort of, you know, uh, whatever. You know, right. he wasn't it, very kind, wasn't very talkative, right. or very giving in that match. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait I think actually I know the match you're talking about. That's when you were uh, the P.J. Walker gimmick, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Wow, I'm, ha- I'm having a flashback to... What, uh, watching that match after cartoons on Saturday. <laughs> oh my god, the old, the good old days. Yeah, right. Was, was, yeah. That the, was, uh, was that the one he put you in the torture rack on? Uh, no, uh, he hit me with the forearm. Right, right, right. That was after the whole motorcycle thing, right? I believe so, yeah. I don't right. think the torture rack was used. Right, right, okay. But I could be wrong, actually. That's a good question. Uh, I haven't seen footage of that. In- 20 years so uh if i could find that thing anywhere i'll look back but i think it was the forearm right right okay okay now they never like now one thing i always wondered now usually on how one thing i've noticed about on house shows back in the day is where oftentimes is sort of what i liked about and what some what i hated about him and i'm not trying to expose the business or nothing but like i went to see a house show once where basically i got the whole uh wrestlemania 18 card all in that night, and so yes. you know, in so many ways of putting it, it was a great show. Oh, yeah. But when we ordered WrestleMania, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, those were uh, they did that a lot, uh, you know, um, especially coming towards 
the night of the big uh, show, those were times. Uh, sometimes they even did that in smaller magic, in smaller markets, <laughs> to uh, give those guys uh, familiarity with working each other's styles and kind of, you know, what went right, what went wrong. This way, they could kind of uh, put the best uh, match possible. Right. Uh, almost like dress rehearsals, really. You know, uh, going into the the big show. So right. yeah, that happened a lot. Yeah. Right. And that's how people hone their characters and everything like that, right? Yeah, and they still do that to this day. Right, right. Maybe not full WrestleMania card, but uh, if you look, right, a lot of the same guys working with a lot of the same guys heading in. Right, right. And yeah. plus, and, and plus, oftentimes it was a lot of times you could see like a lot of guys who were like being jobbed out on like heat and velocity, or a lot of times they would go over. And a perfect example of this is uh. Lance Storm, your old trainer, because for some reason, I very seldom saw him one on, you know, he was always jobbing out for people, but I watched him pin RVD clean. Yeah, weird, right? Yeah. and You just never do. Or... You I mean, just didn't have a rhyme or reason for doing anything. Right. It's like, right. If, if one week they wanted to give you a bone on TV, and, you know, okay. for no reason, or if they wanted to check some guy's attitude... They would make you go over on that guy just to see what he would say. Oh. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. They don't do that really as much anymore, but All they right. were very doing that back then. Right, definitely. right. Now, while on the topic of RVD, this is something I always wondered, and maybe you could shed some insight. I heard he's a really cool dude in real life, and I heard, basically, you know, he likes to smoke a lot of weed, which is, you know, a well-known fact. Did that ever cause a lot of heat backstage back in the day? Because I always heard varying stories about how, you know, like some of the, like people, like maybe like in man the man in management or the road agents didn't like it if, uh, you know, he came in uh, smelling like pot fest. Um, you know, he drove some people crazy. Right. But uh, you know, Van Dam did what Van Dam wanted, and I think Van Dam knew that he was a star there, and. Uh, they needed him um, as much as he needed them. Right. And right. He just, you know, he just did his thing, man. He, you know, he was always safe about it. Uh, he never got really busted in big trouble for it. Right. So, you know, not that I could remember. I'm sure there was an incident, if I can remember, Jim and Sabu. But yeah, but yeah. For, but for the most part, no. Uh, Rob was uh, never really had any heat for it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've always, I've always like wondered that because, you know, because he was all on high times and everything like that, and, and then it was right around the time where WWE was cleaning up its image, and right? I, and it's like I, I didn't. It's like as a kid, you don't realize it, but as an adult, and you hear all the things about how like political it is and how everyone's scrutinized, especially now for everything they do on social media, it really makes me one. He seemed like more or less an anomaly in the WWE. It really is, and like I said, uh, social media was starting to gain its presence, but I don't think that, uh, you know, RVAD would have gotten away with it, especially with the wellness policy being the way it is. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, Val Venus has noted in many, many a live stream uh, that uh, that's part of the reason why he doesn't go back to wrestling, because they won't let him smoke. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, he's, and you know what, I give him a lot of credit for standing by his beliefs and convictions because, because it's a very hard thing to do. A lot of people can't afford to do it in today's day and age. But yeah, the, I'm sure he can't afford it either, but you know what? If it means that that's the quality of life that's going to help him to right. stay off of, you know, other drugs that are probably worse for him. Right. Um, then hey, you know, good for him. Well, you know, you're not the first person to bring that whole point of view across because I've read in more than a few wrestlers' biographies if they just let the boys smoke in their hotel rooms after the thing, you know, a lot maybe a lot of things could have been avoided. But you know, that's that is what it is. I, I guess you know. Sure, um, I you know it's it's easy to say now, but uh, you know one can never tell. I mean, it, it's just. Uh, just one of those things, man. You know, uh, looking back, it's easy to say, but um, I think uh, the things that were going to happen were going to happen. Okay. You know, I really do. 
I, I, you know, because it's, you know, I don't want to get into the whole drug thing because it's been done to death, but I, I just feel that if you were prone to doing drugs, you were going to do drugs. Right. You know? Oh, uh, it, and, uh, yeah. Weed, I don't think a lot of weed would have uh, changed the guys that took pills. Right. Right. Yeah. Or use for those guys to be able to do that too. Well, it's like, uh, and the Jake the Snake said, I guess you got to pick your poison, and people did back then. So, Absolutely. So, you know. So, anyway, another random question. How come we've never heard you on Howard Stern? Or at least I've never heard you, heard you trying to research it. I've never been on Howard Stern. I was never, I've never been invited. I, w- I would love to. Right. Um, you know, hopefully... Uh, when we get out there promoting the credible documentary, I will certainly uh, have my media people, um, which uh, have a you know a pretty big, uh, pretty big contact list, and uh, they do great media stuff um, to possibly do that. That would be uh, a bucket list thing to do something like Howard Stern, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. That I'd like to do. I'd really like to do the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh so yeah, that would be really yeah. awesome. Yeah, see, see, Joe Rogan, he's a very interesting character because a lot of things I could agree wholeheartedly on, on him with, and a lot of things I totally disagree, but you just gotta keep listening, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, his podcast has become such a huge success. Um, you know, I'm just so happy uh, that he's doing it, and I, I find myself a big fan of it. I listen to it quite often, and, uh, just, uh, you know, highly intelligent guy, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy what he uh, what he does and what he has to say, uh, and um, I don't even I don't even know how he'd go about getting on a show like that. But I'm uh, that's another one I'm aiming for. You right. Know, with uh, with Steve Austin and uh, Booker T, I just have to ask. Right. And, and I'll do the same for Chris Jericho's and some of the other big ones. Right. Um, right. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely see what happens. I'll, I'll certainly doing a lot, be doing a lot of those uh, coming up in the next uh, weeks and months to come, including our own. Right, right, yeah, and and I'm actually a fan of all of all those guys' podcasts. To tell you the truth, especially Booker T. Booker T. tells has a hilarious way of telling stories. Right, yeah, he, he's great at that, man. He's yeah, really great at telling stories. Like one one of them, the one most noteworthy ones, and people have to go uh, because honestly, I can't tell it the way that Booker does. Is when Booker uh, tells a story about uh. CM Punk going around blaming the boys for uh for uh stealing his iPod and everyone's like nobody wants your stupid iPod and he's and CM Punk was saying I'm going to beat someone up if they don't come up with the iPod so Booker stood up and says when was the last time you were in a fight he's like oh well one time a fan came into the ring and uh I had to take him down and he's like really you took him down he's like yo man I stole it what are you going to do and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I heard Booker's not one to be like. I heard Booker defeated Batista in real life, so no Booker. I mean, yeah, but Booker's a nice guy, man. Right. Booker's, a, Booker's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. You just don't want to mess with him. Right, right. Oh, I, I definitely, you know, I've, you know, I probably might get heat for saying this, but you know, call it what it is. But one, th- one type of people I've, I've had the misfortune slash fortune of crossing path with paths with in life is straight up real gangsters and i could tell if booker was in wrestling he would be one <laughs> like oh he, he he had a checkered past man we talked about it a little bit on his podcast man he was really out there uh on the streets uh as a young man uh you know didn't have a stable home life right right uh, you know he'd done uh, a lot of things wrong and uh you know, kind of professional wrestling kind of saved him from uh, going down a dark path. Right, and 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 yeah, and good and good thing it did. Good thing it did because really, what would the world of wrestling be like without Booker T and or Harlem Heat in general? I'll tell you, man. What's I that? would never have thought that Booker T from Harlem Heat would be where he is and accomplish what he has. Right, uh, because not only did he have the physical talents and the um, the look and all that. Right. Um, he also had the political savvy, the charisma, the personality to deal with all different personalities backstage. Right. Everybody. Uh, and, uh, super smart guy. 
and I give him all the credit in the world too, man. He, he's one of the good guys. Yeah, he seems he seems really down to earth for a man who's gotten as high as he has. So, absolutely, you know, I'm glad he's in the Hall of Fame. I'm glad he's still uh, still up there. Yeah, and uh, doing his own thing as well. So yeah, man, that's all to Booker. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, we can get him on as a guest. I would love to. Inter- I would yeah, love to sure interview him. I'm sure we probably could, man. Right. He owes me one now. He owes me one now. Oh, okay. Well, that's you never a, know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. So. Yeah, that's a serious too. Right. Once we get our, once we get our, our, our viewers coming in and oh. uh, spreading the word, that's a definite possibility. Oh, yeah. It's just it's just one day at a time, man. One day at a time. That's it. That's so. It, so on another note, this is something that I found li- quite literally just as I was about to call you. So the word in the news is is Daniel Bryan is cleared to return. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, um, look, they need him uh, for this WrestleMania. Bottom line is, I think it's all a work. I think he was, you know, like a lot of people, I think that is know the situation, mm-hmm. uh, like myself close to the situation know how Kurt Angle's cleared to wrestle. Kurt really? was in the physical condition, you know, from anybody. Uh, he was cleared to wrestle a couple of tag matches and uh, obviously doing one at WrestleMania with uh, Ronda Rousey and Triple H and Stephanie. So, okay. uh, you know, why wouldn't Daniel Bryan be? Uh, of course, everybody's injury is different, but uh, okay. I thought it was typically motivated um, to keep Bryan out of the ring. Okay. And but still keep him around for his uh, star power. Right. Um, I think something happened. Someone somewhere either going to back out, might back out, or something. But somebody might be hurt that we don't know about. Right. So uh, they uh, they're looking for something, something big to to pop WrestleMania. That's another one. Right. Well, you know, who knows if we do get rid of Undertaker at this one? We may not. Right. Or more. Or might we get John Cena and Daniel Bryan? Right, right. Or the Undertaker. Maybe they're teasing the Undertaker to give us Daniel Bryan. Yeah, you know how they do like they did like to toy with us a lot like that back in the day. So I, I wouldn't. Well, super- actually, that would be a that'd be a pretty huge pop. I mean, fans would be disappointed in getting the Undertaker. Right. And if you're, with the Total Divas program, they sure would be excited to see uh, you know Daniel Bryan come back uh, and wrestle John Cena. Yeah, but that that that's not nearly as disappointing as when uh we and and I I'm not sure if you were around when the Warrior did this is where he kept coming back and leaving and coming back and every time he came back he was worse than before and I'm a huge Warrior fan it breaks my heart to say that but if you watch the videos that's that's what it is man you know yeah, yeah. Uh, do remember a little bit of that actually oh. so yeah. oh. Oh, you, oh, you do, yeah. That's just, and it's just like, and then they they'd advertise him for a pay per view, and like, don't get me wrong, Shawn Michaels and Mister Perfect were good replacements for him, but uh, right, of course, I was there when he came back though to work with Hunter. I remember that. Oh, oh, so you were you, were you like in the building when that whole fiasco happened? Yeah, yeah I was in there. Oh, so uh, were you like witness to like the whole commotion that went on? Because I guess like words were exchanged at the like where the warrior chewed out Triple H and because uh, I wasn't around to no, no. I didn't I didn't catch that. Oh yeah, which again that that'd be a question I'd have to ask Triple H if I ever got him on. Like you know. Yeah, of course. Well, that'd be a great question. Right, right. Well, I I, I see. I was so happy they inducted him before they uh before they uh. He, he ended up passing on, so it was nice they ended on a good note. That was perfect. That was right. perfect. His uh, last moment in the sun, uh, both uh, at WrestleMania and at Raw, uh, and it was very well done. It was a great send-off, and, and I think Jim knew it, too. I don't think he was feeling well, and I uh, probably didn't know what it was, but uh, I think it was all, uh, you know, coming to a head, I guess. And right. Sad. right, but, but also... I'm not, look, everybody makes their own decisions in life, but he did do a lot of steroids. Like, he looked like a cartoon. That just could not be good for you. No, no, it couldn't. I mean, uh, look, steroids are, are hormones, and when used properly by doctors, right. they're made to help and to cure deficiencies. Uh, 
Right. You know, and you've got your own uh, boosters. Right. And uh, phenomenally. And uh, work actually very safely. It's administered by doctors or administered in dosages that are, you know, that your body can handle. Um, and if you're out there just doing, you know, wrestler style doses and uh, doing it all the, all year round, you're only supposed to do it, you know, eight weeks maximum at a time. After taking eight weeks off, you can do a little more again. You know, if there's a regimen to it, uh, where a lot of the older guys actually go to, you know, HGH clinics these days and get it done, uh, it just costs a ton, a ton of money. You know, doctors can't do it. It's just illegal in the world of sports. Right. Out of the whole thing. And, uh, you know, and you just can't use them illegally. That's the crime. It's not that it's so immoral. It's immoral in the world of sport because it's a competitive thing. Right. I'm sure right. That actors use it all the time. People use it all the time. Well, I've used I've used it before, and uh, I can't, you know, I've never had adverse effects. Well, you know, uh, it, it, uh, again, it, it, it depends what you get, who you get it from, and how right. you use it. If you abuse it, it's like anything in life, man. Everything right. has to have a balance. Anything you abuse, if you eat too much bad food, you're going to be fat. If you exercise too much, that could be harmful. If you drink too much alcohol, take too many pills. Uh, have too much, you know, anything. It's uh, not good for you. Uh, too much sun, too much, you know, sleep. Uh, you know, anything that you do it to excess is not good. Everything comes with balance and moderation. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's just one of those things. Right, right. Hey, hey, you know, when you're right, you're right. And, you know, since we're getting into, since we're sort of getting into that, let's Let's now talk about the move. The you know what's going on with the movie. How's that coming along? Let's talk about the. Let's let's just talk about the rough road that we. You know, when going over the notes from the last interview, when you start talking about how you have to work side jobs at night, you know, just to scrape by and make your breadline each each week. Now, probably the hard. This is one. Of, this is something I've experienced in life, where I think one of the hardest things in the world that someone will ever have to go through is not having it then having it, and life, you know, gets a lot easier, you know, lots of rights and wrongs get written right, and, you know, you you know, everything's going good, and then you lose it all, and, and having to get it back, or, have, or having to face the reality of the situation that you won't be able to get it the same way that you got it before. So, I know, I know that's a very confusing question. Well, I mean, how do I personally feel about it? Yeah, how like how do you feel? Like, because am I am I wrong? Is that not does that not teach any man humility? Uh, it is. Uh, it's very disheartening. It's very sad. Um, especially when you know you uh, fought for a dream your whole life. Right. Got to the you know pretty much got to a very high level of achieving that dream. Did it for twenty plus years, and then really realizing. You know, having that come to Jesus moment where you realize, look, I can't do this for a living anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, where do I go? What do I do? Mm-hmm. I don't have a resume. Um, I've been a wrestler for since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty much been my only line of work. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, being somewhat famous, uh, even if you could say D-list, mm-hmm. whatever, people do recognize you, believe it or not. Right. And uh, it's uh, it's embarrassing. Uh, it makes you feel less than, and it's sad because what I had to work, like you know, sweat my nuts off for three hundred fifty dollars, mm-hmm. barely would any bill. Um, I could do double that wrestling the uh, indie shot, mm-hmm. you know. So it's very hard. It's right. very hard. Right. And uh, I was, it's it's a hard balance, you know. Right, it's but hard... but. You know, when we're talking about that come to Jesus moment, is there not redemption and a second chance for those truly willing to work for it? I hope so. I hope through this uh, movie, through right. this whole experience, I mean, I'm, I'm noticing it happening now. I'm, uh, you know, I'm back in the loop uh, with my old friends, with the wrestling community, with people that matter in the wrestling community, the decision makers. I'm getting bookings uh, quite regularly. I'm, uh, you know, booked all the way through pretty much uh, into early June. Oh, wow. Um, 
a lot of great opportunity with this uh, when this thing finishes wrapping up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do hope that I could find something to do in the business um, that uh, I could do and uh, make an, an honest living with. What about a road agent? You could do that. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, who knows? Who knows? They're very picky. You know, they got the pick of the litter and a lot of politics up there. So, uh, but I'm not not ruling that out. Anything can happen. Right, right. Or what? Or what if they? Uh, what if they like made you the commissioner of NXT? You know, they put you. Or is William Regal still doing that? Yeah, well, Re- Regal's still doing that. Uh, and uh, <coughs> I mean, who knows? Who knows? Right. Anything is a threat. Anything is up for grabs at this point. Right, right. Now, getting into the whole thing to wrap things up on a more of a positive note. This is something I wondered going over from previous years. I'm surprised when you said you never worked in Australia. I heard wrestling is pretty big down there. It is. It is. I just never, uh, never, never came across uh, a promoter to bring me in. And uh, at the time, WWE, um, if they were going, I was on the, the U.S. tour. So okay. I just never crossed paths. I was never, uh, never in the cards for me. But hopefully that will uh, someday be a bucket list thing for me to do. Right. So so you never got to meet Nathan Jones and or anything? No. No? I never. Never. No. Never. Never at all. But hopefully, hey, I, 44 it, years young, brother. Right. Hey, it's, it's a shame because I'm pretty sure he was locked up at the time that I, when ECW existed. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he, he would have been something in ECW. Yeah, I sure would. Right. He's a big boy, man. Oh. He's a big boy. Oh, oh yeah. He, he, he definitely, like, well, here's the whole thing. He's, it's just like when they did the whole thing of an ex-convict, he just, he just like looks like an Australian ex-convict. That's why it's. Just, oh, he- we did. He looked like he would rape your mother, children, and dog. Oh yeah, he yeah he's definitely that guy you don't want to fall asleep before he <laughs> does in the cell. <laughs> not saying he's yeah. do, not saying he's down like that, but but no, uh, I know. but yeah, uh, he had that look. Yeah, he definitely had that look, and you know, which makes me speculate because there's I, there I've heard there's tons of big boys in prison, and uh, it really makes me speculate if anyone ever really messed with him. So. But who knows? Maybe we could get him on the show and ask him ourselves. There you go. There you go, man. <laughs> All right. Oh, dude. So we're going to wrap up this episode of Cable Incredible Radio. To all the listeners who supported us this far, I appreciate it. Give it a big like and subscribe. We appreciate it greatly. It helps us out and helps us grow as a channel. And we will see Definitely. you next time. And uh, real quick, before we leave Cable Guy, all of our listeners, man, go over to pjpolacco.com. What I always do is I like to go over to Cable Guy's YouTube channel and I'll retweet and share all of our stuff and his past guests as well. So go on over to you to uh, Twitter at PJ Polacco and I'll be sharing all of these shows that we do regularly uh, from the past to uh, all that we do in the future, man. We're, t- we're only going up from here. So okay. this show will be just incredible. That's for sure. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and let's all be nice to each other. This is Cable Incredible, signing off. This is a Chicken Beats production.